guys, thanks for checking out the video today. We're going to be going through a teardown of the plated differentials that are in the JDM Evo 4 to Evo, well, the popular ones are 4 to 6.5. After that, they do appear in the uh, JDM uh, non-AYC ACD cars, which is uh, the Evo 8 and 9 as well, the RS models. And uh, they also show up in the USDM 8 and 9 cars. So um, yeah, we'll be tearing down that diff. I'll be going through uh, the one that got damaged at the track and uh, sort of giving you a once over on how those diffs go together. So stay tuned for the video. Okay guys, so we've moved on to getting into that rear end. So this is gonna be uh, two diffs way over there on my workbench. Um, what I'm going to be doing is moving over a few parts from the Evo 4 RS diff that I destroyed at the track over to a Rally Art diff uh, that I've already taken apart, already reassembled, but I need the rear cover. I need to move the uh, snout over um, because I don't really want to re drill that Rally Art snout necessarily. Um, I'm also going to tear down the uh, plated uh, limited slip differential that's in the Evo 4 RS diff and see what's gone wrong. What's the issue? Um, likely it's the plates that have uh, failed, but we'll take a look at that. So um, when I uh, reassemble this diff, I'm not going to be doing anything today uh, related to pinion depth or lash or anything like that because that's going to turn this video into an hour plus long video and um, I'm not going to bother with that today. So uh, I'm just going to give you guys a sense of what's inside those diffs, uh, how some of the parts work and uh, what the plates look like and uh, some of the parts inside that uh, LSD. So uh, let's start tearing this diff down. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we're going to do here is we're going to remove the back cover. Um, this back cover needs to be used for my rally art diff uh, because the rear bar on the rally art uh, that supports the diff is different than the mustache bar on the Evo series cars. So I'm going to need uh, this rear cover and so I've got to take all the fasteners out and uh, break it loose on the back here and that'll be exposing the uh, diff and the ring and pinion. Okay, so it's simple as that. Um, you really only need two little taps, running a razor around the uh, outside of the case. Other than that, it should pop off unless the person uh, completely uh, saturated it with uh, sealant. So, so what we're looking at right now, we have the ring gear here, LSD here, and we have uh, two uh, bearing caps here and that's retaining a uh, spacer and uh, the diff bearings um, if you follow the ring gear all the way around uh, you have the pinion gear at the base there that goes out to 
uh, the snout here and uh, turns the drive shaft. Okay, so next step would be to um, free up these uh, caps here. Now, uh, uh, I like to keep organized. Uh, so normally I lay down a uh, couple uh, paper towels and I make sure that these are all lined up uh, in a correct way so that when I put everything back together, it goes back together the same way that it came apart. So we'll be doing that as well. Okay, so the caps came off. No issue with that. Now the idea will be to, uh, this differential actually needs to be pried out. Um, and I'll use some uh, brass and wood tooling for that. You don't want to use uh, anything on this differential uh, that would be sort of steel on steel. That's the idea. So um, you want to pop this out. It's going to be in there quite a bit because uh, there is uh, spacers and it is uh, uh, not not really an interference fit, but it's a very tight fit. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to pull this out with the shims and uh, then I'll uh, uh, show you guys uh, kind of the next step here. Okay, so I... Uh, pop the diff out um, so the way it goes is you have the shim is against this side of the case so right there and then you have a uh, bearing race that's being spaced out from the rear okay like so now this bearing race will match up to the bearing okay and so um, and it's spaced out like that okay now um, that's part of the uh, process of giving um, this ring gear and uh, if you can see in there the corresponding uh, pinion gear uh, proper engagement so now that it's out um, you can see uh, in the diff here uh, that there is uh, uh, some plates and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these top bolts uh, that are holding the ring gear on pop that off and then we'll be in a position that we can uh, split apart the LSD. Okay, so all the ring gear bolts come off the top like that. Clean all of that up. And uh, the ring gear basically just slides straight down. Okay, it might need a couple taps uh, from a mallet, um, but it'll it'll come straight down. Um, now, just pay some uh, particular attention to the markings on the LSD case. You can see right there that there's a line etched in. That's to align the lid, for lack of a better term, right here, uh, with the body of the LSD. So uh, make sure that you take note of that. It's got to go back together the same way. Now, the ring gear slips off. You can put the ring gear aside. And uh, what you're gonna do now is uh, turn the LSD over. And if you take a look on the edge here, you're gonna see um, some screws. Okay, there's one there, so one, two, three, four. Now uh, keep particular, uh, pay particular attention to those because they are soft and they are as well uh, normally Loctited in. So be careful not to strip those um, because otherwise you're gonna be drilling them out. So um, yeah, make sure you have a fresh <laughs> screwdriver that matches that size 
and uh, they do take a bit of, of force to get out. And uh, you can see here uh, the stack of plates inside. Okay, so next step, remove those fasteners. Okay, so unfortunately, those uh, small screws that held the case together, I was only able to get one out without drilling it. So there, uh, here I'll show you here. So they are very small. They're like a pan head. And uh, this is the only one I was able to get out. Unfortunately, I put some heat on there. Um, used a few tricks, but could not break them free. They were uh, drowning in red Loctite as well. So um, a trick to use, is they're in from this side, right, through the case. So if you go on the back side, right there, they're actually through holes and they're threaded. So if you use a 9 ths drill bit, from the back, you can drill the fastener through without wrecking the threads, and it just pops right out. So 964, probably want to, well, don't bother writing it down because I'm sure you guys don't do this all the time, but um, reference this video, 964 drill bit. You won't wreck the threads on the case if you're careful and uh, you'll drill through the fastener and then you just buy some new uh, pan head fine thread screws and put it back together right so okay so at this point we will uh, pop off the lid okay we'll start by taking the top off here okay now Again, you want to keep order to this stuff. So the first friction disc at the top is uh, the spring plate. So it is, it has a little bit of a cup to it. It's going to be very hard to see on here on video, but you would want to um, make sure that you're aware of which direction this goes. It's cupped up so that it puts some pressure on the clutch pack here. Okay, and then from there, we have the friction discs. Okay, the frictions are both sides. These are actually not badly worn at all. I'm starting to think that this uh, LSD was not locking properly because of how dirty it is inside. The case is very, very dirty. Okay, so it basically just alternates. Okay. All right, so including the spring plate, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six and six, uh, it's a 12 plate clutch. And uh, yeah, so what I'm seeing here is that The um, diff itself um, is very worn on the outside and it looks like somebody, uh, the plates look fresh so it looks like someone replaced the plates in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull out the center so that you guys can see how the stack looks. 
but I'll have to put the camera down to do this because I cannot do it with one hand. So be right back here. GoPro. Okay, so I pulled the LSD core out of here. And uh, yeah, what I'm left with here is um, the uh, LSD core itself. The, so the rest of the plates, if you can imagine, it's plates, gear core, plates. So the way this works is, it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but Uh, the way this works is as this LSD center turns and turns this center dowel, it pushes these two halves apart. And what that does is it tightens up the plates on each end and creates that lock. So um, that's how, uh, well, in very, very layman's terms, how this LSD works. So now these plated LSDs, um, they tend to wear out the plates, but as you can see, these plates are in very nice shape. So they were either replaced or, um, yeah, uh, I, I, well, there's nothing else. They, it looks like they're repla replaced because every other part of this LSD looks like it's worn a bit, like a 20 year LS, 20 year old LSD should be. These plates look uh, fairly new. So I'm going to make an assumption that this has probably been rebuilt once before. Uh, um, the other thing that I've noticed is the case does have a little bit of scoring, but it's not, it's not severe, but it's definitely there. So, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say this LSD is garbage, but... It definitely uh, has seen some miles, so um, yeah, I'm gonna probably deburr the inside of this case, and uh, then I'm gonna reassemble this after it's been given a good clean. So okay, so I've figured out the uh, reason that this diff was locking erratically, so. If you look inside the case here, so these little divots are where the uh, plates are meant to slide when the diff locks. Chunks out of those areas that are supposed to be smooth. And what's, what's happening is these plates with their little ears slide along there as it locks. Now, if they get hung up as they're moving, it's going to cause er like erratic locking. In addition, what's going to happen is those plates are going to twist and bind, which is also going to cause some erratic locking conditions. So, um, what I suspect happened with this diff is that it probably did have original plates in it that got wrecked and uh, whoever was in here to um, try and fix it decided to just swap in new plates but they never did um, do anything with the case now these burrs um, really they would have to be welded and then machined back out again um, so yeah at this point this uh, LSD core it has a good center section uh, good plates it's dirty but that's not the end of the world but the uh, key to the erratic locking is uh, definitely these slide areas so uh, as the diff separates uh, from the center and these plates are pushed together they're meant to move around a bit if they're uh, stuck because there's ridges in the smooth area the bore that they're supposed to slide in it's going to create some really weird conditions so so this uh, differential cover is messed up 
Um, I might be able to weld it and machine it back out, but uh, that's probably a project for another day. Luckily, I have a good LSD core in here that I've already gone through and has no sort of damage like this. So, so this one will go on the shelf for a uh, future repair job. Um, and uh, right now that uh, Evo 4 case there, the ring and pinion, um, I'll just keep aside and uh, just keep it for another day. So there you have it. All right, guys, so I've cleaned up that Evo diff. All right, so fresh coat of paint. Uh, got the uh, new snout on at the bottom there with the uh, current Evo 6 bolt pattern drilled in. Um, this one I had gone through a while ago. It's in great condition. All the plates are good. It does not have the same problem as the other LSD I have. And uh, I have the cover for it right here that I cleaned up. It's ready to go on. So this one's got some fresh paint on it. So with the painted case, I'm gonna leave it for a few hours, make sure that I don't mess up that nice new paint job. And uh, then I'll throw the rear cover on and then it's gonna be on to fabricating the wings that come off the diff. And I'll show you guys uh, what I do for that. So um, basically I'm adapting a uh, Evo 8.9 case to a uh, Evo 6 GSR front bar and so the wings are just going to be custom. I'm just going to weld some up and uh, get that out of the way because I don't want to buy a bunch of parts when I have a bunch of steel here that I could use so why not just weld them, make them up. So I'm going to do that. Um, on these uh, diffs, the way that they're set up, the mustache bar at the back of the diff takes most of the twisting force. Uh, the front wings are not necessarily along for the ride, but they take a lot less force, so they don't have to be uh, super, super robust. Um, although, uh, yeah, I mean, they don't have to be incredibly strong, but I'm gonna still weld them out of some substantially thick steel, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so that's next up. All right, guys, that's the video for now for the uh, RS diff teardown. Um, I'm going to be putting it in the vehicle next with some custom mounts, so I'll be covering that in the next video. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell to make sure you get updates on my new videos, which I'm trying to do once a week, but we'll see uh, how easy it is to keep up with that. Um, as well, check me out on Instagram at Wrench Rampage. Have a good night.